everybody, Coach Joe here from Boston House Gym. Today, me and Tommy LaStella, Major League Second Baseman for the Atlanta Braves, are gonna show you some drills that he uses all the time to improve his shoulder flexibility, mobility, and strength. These drills are gonna help you stay in the game longer and improve your ability on the field. One of the key areas that's fundamental for all throwers is tissue quality, specific to the shoulder girdle, and throwing on. We're going to show you a bunch of drills that we use to improve tissue quality. And what I mean is the elasticity of the muscles. Deep tissue work, tissue work, self myofascial release, foam rolling, lax ball, okay, and different types of cross frictional work to help improve the elasticity, lengthening, and flexibility of the muscles pre and post workout. Here we go. First drill we're going to do here is just a little bit for thoracic mobility. Tommy's gonna lay on top of the roll up and he's gonna he's gonna flex upward and, and open up his, his thoracic spine and then extend backwards over the roller and just that's it and just thoracic spine extension and flexion and just trying to get a little mobility in that spine, open up, that's it. Yeah. And you want to do about eight to ten reps of these. Just open up that spine, good. That's it. I like to hit at the end we do two more. Good, last one. At the end, I like to roll it out a little bit. I'll just kind of roll out my dime a little bit, keep my hands up behind my head. That's it. Just roll that, roll that area out and get a little tissue work in there as I'm going through my movement. Okay. Next soft tissue drill we're going to do here with the foam roller is for his lats and his rotator cuffs in the back of the arm. He's going to lay on top of it, get it right underneath his lats. You're going to keep your thumb pointing straight up and he's going to roll back and you're going to use the roller to kind of grind out his lats a little bit in here, help improve that extension of the arm and his ability to rotate his arm back and he throws. Okay. This all, again, all, all of this is to help improve the rotation of the thoracic spine and opening that ability to be able to, whether it's swinging his back or, or throwing from second base. Good. And then to hit the rotator cuff, he's going to just kind of get the roller underneath the armpit a little bit, palm up, okay? And again, just small movement back and forth over the roller, okay? Grinding out that tissue a little bit, improving that tissue quality, removing some of the inflammation, removing some of the scar tissue, and, uh, and just getting a little bit better quality of movement in there, okay? And, and it just generally feels good. It helps, you know, work out some of the kinks if you've been throwing a lot, hitting a lot, a lot of practices. The next drill we're going to do using the lax ball, work on the tissue on the front side, the anterior side of the shoulder girdle, rolling out the pec a little bit, the anterior deltoid. You can just do it a little bit on yourself, and then we we'll use the wall for a little bit more pressure to get a little deeper into that tissue. So you're just going to take that ball, roll it across the top, right across, right underneath the clavicle, across the top part of the pec, and on that anterior delt a little bit. Okay? After maybe about a minute or so, 30 seconds to a minute of doing it by himself, he'll rotate into the wall, right? Get your arm back behind you, rotate all the way in like this, right? And the arm will be down a little bit. You don't want to get too much extension. Watch, watch, that, watch that extension of the arm back here, right? And that flexion of the arm, right? But he's just going to roll that, turn it in a little bit, keep the tissue there. And so use the other hand to hold the ball in place. And he's just going to roll that across the, the, the pec and the anterior delt. And if you hit the right spot, you can feel it sometimes, you can feel it getting right up on that capsule, right up on that bicep tendon. When the bicep tendon comes over, it feels really good at the throwing. Good, nice tail. And Tiger Tail is a real great tool for doing you know, a lot of tissue work. We use it a lot for our biceps, for our throwers. But you could also use a 45 pound bar that's in the racks and you just use the, the end of the roller as the, as the same technique that we're going to show you here. And Tommy's going to pin the, pin the tiger tail against the wall and hold it there and do his bicep. Okay. That's it. Okay. And you just want to work that tissue up and down from the medial side of the bicep okay, to the lateral side. Work it all the way from the top portion to the bottom from the origin to the insertion as much as you can. You can even do your forearms with this too. So if your forearms all in here in the brachialis and, and, and around the ulna is sore, you can work that out too.
Now we're gonna show you our shoulder mobility warm-up. We're gonna show you a series of drills that you can follow along with that'll help improve your strength, flexibility, and mobility in your shoulder girdle. Okay? One of the key areas that we're gonna be working on throughout this routine is thoracic mobility. The ability to rotate and move the thoracic spine compared to the lumbar spine. Here we go. Next drill we're going to do is called the rock back extension and rotation. Again, this is a great exercise for thoracic mobility okay, and improving the mobility in, in the spine and taking the lumbar flexion and rotation out of it by having him sit back on his legs a little bit. It's really important. A lot of guys do this in the full quadruped position and what you see is a lot of excessive arch and when they rotate, they arch even more and a lot of times they wind up causing even more lower back pain. So this is just a, a quick variation of that to remove that lumbar rotation. Okay? So Tom's gonna get into a quadruped position. He's gonna sit back on his legs so he gets that nice flat back. Okay? He's gonna put, hit, pin his one hand to his ear. He's gonna rotate under and then rotate up and look up at the elbow and concentrating on rotating from his spine and not forcing the movement with his arm. He's not jacking that arm up. He's just rotating here. That's it, as much as you can, concentrate on the spine. And if you're working with a kid, and Tommy's leaning towards me a little bit, sometimes if you're working with a kid, what, I, what I'll do is I'll brace him, go ahead, and then have him rotate against me, so it's a little bit forceful, and he's stuck rotating on that, on that axis, and not pulling away from the movement. And I'll have him do somewhere in the range of eight to 10 reps, exhaling as he's rotating up towards me, and holding that stretch for like a one count, and then back down, and then you do the other side. Okay, real simple, great variation. Again, if you have an athlete, a lot of times you'll see athletes with bad posture. They got a real bad forward lean. They got slumping shoulders and a bad posture like this. They generally tend to have real poor thoracic spine mobility. That mobility is coming from somewhere when they throw or hit. It's generally going to be on the lumbar spine rotation and our impingement of the shoulder for throwing. They got to jack that arm back even more or they have to rotate that lumbar spine even more because they're not getting anything in the middle, right? And a lot of times those guys wind up injured. Next drill we're going to do is called a windmill. You're going to get on the ground, support your knee. You can use a med ball. You can just use two legs if you didn't have any equipment at all. You can put one leg on top of the other. He's going to get that leg up at 90 degrees. His arms are at 90 degrees, one hand on top of the other. He's going to extend backwards and look up and look at your hand as it rotates over. And again, try to think about rotating through his thoracic spine and not creating the movement with his arm, but creating the movement with the rotation of his torso. I'm going to get about five of those. Look up, follow the hands, circle around, back down, exhale as you come through the motion. Good, circle around, that's it. Good, that's down. So, depending on your range of motion, okay, some people will be able to bring it all the way back. Two more time. Some people will bring it all the way back. You just go as far as you can until you get a really good stretch in the spine and as you go through these over a period of weeks, as it improves, you should be able to go a little bit further. Nice job, good. You want to do both sides, somewhere in the range of eight to 10 reps. Right. Next drill we're gonna do is just a, uh, uh, they call these overhead alternating extensions. Okay? You can make yourself a peanut using two lax balls. These are two actually practice hitting balls that we have and we just duct tape them together. And Tom is gonna get on the ground here. Okay. I'm going to take the peanut, I'm going to just face this way, there you go. I'm going to take the peanut, I'm going to put it right between his back, right, right just below his shoulder blades in the diamond of his back, and he's going to lay back on that ball, right? get it into position, he's going to have his arms up over, and he's going to extend back, bring all the way down to his waist, and he's going to bring it all the way back down, and then the next one, all the way back down, good, back and forth, and you do about 10 reps or so, you keep going. Now, if, if you have a range of motion issue, okay, like Tommy does, he's got a little bit of issue on his left side, right? It's okay if you come back and you gotta bend that elbow a little bit just to reach the ground, okay? And that's fine. Practice over time, improve that mobility, and hopefully he'll be able to extend that out a little bit more if we keep working on this. Okay, just do a couple more reps. Good. One more. Good. Okay, just sit up top. And then what I would do from here is I'd probably move that ball down a little bit more. So I'd work the tissue quality here in the lower side of the traps and the lower between the scapula. And I'll move it up a little bit more right between the center of my scapula, right, right in the meat of my traps. And we'll do another round. We can just get that up there. A lot of times that guy's are jacked up right under the neck bone, right under the... Right. Okay. Good. And he'll do the same thing. And he'll get another 8 to 10 reps aside. Okay. Focusing on moving 
his shoulder blades, moving his, moving his arm nice and smooth, okay? exhaling through the motion, right? relaxing his chest, relaxing his thoracic spine over that ball. Right? You not only get, you get an extension of the spine, but you're grinding out some of that tissue and there's some of the traps, levator scapulas. Good, nice job. Next drill we're going to do is just a lying band pull apart. This is a great drill because one of the big mistakes I see when kids are doing band pull aparts is they get the band out front and they're jerking and pulling and they're getting a lot of lumbar flexion, right? And, they get, uh, and, they're, and they're squeezing with their shoulder blades and they're just arching their back real hard and they're not really getting a clean movement. So this is a great variation for getting the spine in alignment and then making sure that they're pulling with the muscles that they're supposed to be using. So Tommy's going to lay on top of the roller, he's going to flatten out his lower back so his lower back is on the roller, right? He's going to tuck his chin in, right? So his spine is nice and straight line. He'll grab the band out in front of you, right? And tighten it up. And what you're doing here is I'm concentrating real hard on pulling from the, pulling from the glenohumeral, pulling from my external rotators of the arm from my rotated cuffs and not squeezing and arching my back to pull with my traps but just pulling the arms apart nice and smooth right and this is a great way of getting the spine in alignment removing some of that lumbar arching right? and some of the jerking and cheating that goes on with doing you know heavier or more voluminous band pull aparts right? a really good way to focus on the rotator cuff and isolate the rotator cuff Alright guys, the next exercise we're going to do is just an external rotation to the wall. Alright, this is a great way of getting yourself into an, a, again into alignment where you have that neutral posture. Right, I got my chest down. I'm not arching my back. I'm not arching my thoracic, with your chest up. And a lot of times when you see kids doing external rotation work, they're either doing way too heavy with, with bands and their weights that are too heavy, or too much volume and they're burning out the muscles, and then it becomes this type of action, right, and you're not really getting the rotator cuff, and what you're probably doing is you're putting the arm into a lot more impingement like this. So this is a great way of getting into alignment. So what Tommy's going to do is he's going to get his hip against the wall, right, he's going to get his shoulder against the wall, right, his elbow's floating. I should be able to put my hand behind his elbow. I got about two inches behind his elbow. He's going to use his hand here to kind of monitor the rotation of his humerus, right, make sure that he's rotating from the humerus and not arching up his back as he gets to the top range of that motion. And he's just going to rotate up and down the wall as much as he can. You come down a little bit below, get a little bit of that internal rotation to external rotation action, right? And I shouldn't feel a lot of pressure on my hand because he's rotating on the axis. He's not pushing into the wall to create that rotation, right? Nice and smooth. I'll do maybe 10 or so, 15 sometimes, depending on the kid. If they need a little bit more range of motion. And as you get better at this, you can actually use the wall as a little resistance and push into the wall for a one count and come back down and push into the wall for a one count and get some strengthening out of this too. So that you can, for an untrained athlete, for a young athlete, this will be enough rotator cuff exercise if you were doing this on a regular basis two or three times a week for two sets of 10 to 15 reps per side, you'd be getting a lot of rotator cuff exercise. If you're doing it right, you'll definitely get some strengthening out of it too. And as they progress, they get a little older, obviously Tommy's in his 20s, Right? Been playing baseball for a lot of years. You can use some resistance work. You can even add a band to that. But as a mobility drill, as a warm-up drill, I would still do it with no weight and then add weight later on and add some resistance later on if we were doing it as a strength exercise. Maybe as a filler in between some of the strength exercises. So the next exercise we're going to do is just a prone okay, uh, uh, shoulder extension, okay, a prone, uh, prone arm extension. right? And what I see most of the time is guys doing YTW circuits and they're doing them in a set, they're doing a lot of volume, and they're burning out the stabilization muscles, they're burning out the small muscles in, in lieu of fatigue, and it winds up becoming either a, a motion with a lot of momentum or using the wrong musculature. So this is a great way of, again, isolating the muscles that I'm trying to work and, and working on specific aspects. For Tom, for a guy who's you know, uh, uh, pretty far ahead in the process of baseball, it's really about making sure that he's healthy and making sure that the musculature that he's overworking while he's playing is getting some quality work. So I want to make sure when I do this exercise that I'm using my scapula and I'm creating the movement by pulling my scapula, pulling with my traps over, and not just arming the movement like this, creating more impingement here in the glenohumeral. I want to lift with the scapula Right, and bring that arm out, and it's going to come out. He's going to have his thumb off, right, and it's just going to come out in a nice angle, maybe about, about 135 degrees or so, and nice and smooth. Pull him from here, pull from that trap, and do a couple reps when you come. That's it. And lift, good. 
That's it. We'll lift right here. That's it. Don't let that arm come out. Lift. Good. And pull from your scapula. Up. Good. <clears throat> Up. That's it. Pull it over. That's it. Concentrate on the time. Get that air. You know that little shrug action going. Good. One more. Last one. Up. Good. Nice job. Nice job. So you did, you can. This is a good exercise if you have a table. If you don't have a table. Uh, I don't recommend doing the full extension version on the ground. A lot of times you'll see guys getting down on the ground and they'll get their head down and they're doing this. Problem is I'm already in full extension. A lot of times I'm already getting in impingement. Most of the kids that we have do whatever, do whatever it is, lack of gym class, lack of play like we used to have when I was a kid. Uh, kids just seem to be tighter tissue wise nowadays and have less range of motion than they used to. And uh, we get a lot of kids that get down in this position. They're, they're totally jacked up already, so to try and get them to do more extension is actually just causing more harm than good. So there's a quick variation that you can do on the ground. You can do this on the field. The Tom, Tom's just going to get down on the ground. He's going to have his arms folded under, under his face, right? Chin up a little bit, Tom, right? And he's going to get those up. You don't want to have him tucked in too far. You just want a nice, tight elbow. And he's just going to lift those elbows off the ground using his traps and squeeze. Come back down. Use his traps and squeeze. Come back down. Use his traps and squeeze, you get a couple more reps. And this is great because what I've done here by bending the elbow is I've taken a lot of that extension out of the out of the arm, I've taken a lot of that impingement out of here, and now I'm creating movement here, right, instead of here, right? I'm, I'm, I'm lessening that glenohumeral extension and impingement and um, focusing more on the traps and the muscles that I'm trying to strengthen. All right, everyone, now we're going to show you some core drills. And the core gets so much press nowadays and what it means to a baseball player. We need core development. Every dad that comes in the gym tells me, oh, he needs to strengthen his core. Well, what, the, what is the core and what does that really mean? And the core is really everything from your knees to your neck and anything that moves, shifts, rotates, and holds the spine and trunk in place. Okay? So we're going to show you drills that are really important. Two aspects for baseball that are specific for baseball is bracing and the ability to tighten up and hold against a force, right? And two, anti-rotation, the ability to anti-rotate or counter the rotational movements, right? Here we go. One of the most important ways uh, to work your core is by bracing your core and getting used to that, that squeezing action. So like if I was to tighten top of the stomach, that clamping that he gets, like when you're wearing a weight belt around you, bit well, if you see power just putting the weight belt on that, that clamp that they get from the weight belt is the same effect that you want to try and teach your athletes to have. So a great way to do that is by carrying things, by offsetting it, and we try to work them in right into our strength routine. So kids will go from a strength exercise right to some type of bracing core exercise where they're either carrying a sandbag, holding a kettlebell, or doing some one of their strength movements offset with a sandbag or a kettlebell. So I'm just going to show you a top you hold. Literally just holding the sandbag and he could do he could do his lunges with the sandbag in this position, right? So you go step into a lunge, right? He could be doing his lunge while he's bracing his core. You could have him carry a heavier sandbag for a distance and down and back for say 10 or 15 yards. You could have him stand and hold for time, right? Or a lot of times what we'll do is he'll have we'll have him switching shoulders so he can switch on and off, bring it back down, switch on and off, back down, switching shoulders, clamping that core, right? Another great way to work it is by offsetting the movement, right? So again, he's gonna put the shoulder on his shoulder, he's gonna clamp down on that core and tighten his core, and he would just step into his lunge, right? You could do a box step up onto a box doing this same variation, right? And now, because he's offsetting the weight, he's got to lock down that core, embrace that core, and stabilize his core, right? And this is a great way of improving the internal core, the muscles that stabilize the spine, and sneaking it in as a strength exercise, so it's not just always core work, it's part of his strength routine too, and he's getting a lot of core training out of it. All right, so I just want to show you one or two more ground-based bracing exercises that we do here a lot with our baseball. We do these with all our athletes. All athletes need that that balsava, that bracing core exercise, right? Teaching them how to tighten up their spine, tighten up their core, keep their spine in alignment. So Tommy's gonna get into a push-up position, and we just call these walking, I call these walking uh, planks, and he's just gonna bring one leg up and squeeze 
and brace that core, and then put it back, and then bring it up again. Squeeze and brace that core, bring it up. Squeeze and brace that core, and he can do about 10 reps a side. He can alternate legs, you can do a bunch of different variations of this, right? This is a great way of moving and bracing the core at the same time, okay? The last ground-based exercise we're gonna do, call these spider planks. Um, I see a lot of atrocities doing these. Okay, kids just repping them out, repping them out. A lot of spinal flexion, a lot of lumbar flexion, right? And not a lot of concentration on keeping a real tight core and bracing the core and stopping the motion instead of just like momentum the motion, okay? So Tom's gonna get down on his elbows for this one. You could do this in the push-up position. We like to do it from the elbows. And he's gonna brace that core and keep it nice and tight. And he's gonna pull it up to the outside and hold. And then bring it back down. Pull up to the outside and hold. Bring it back down. So not only is he fighting the core from sagging, he's fighting that rotation by bringing the leg to the outside. That weight's offset him. It wants to pull him down this way. He's gonna fight that rotation, okay? Good, nice job. All right, so the other core component that's really important, other than bracing, that stable, that clamping of the core, right, that we get from heavy weight lifting, from carrying stuff, uh, even pushing sleds and things like that, that, that tightening of the core is really important. The other thing is anti-rotation. Tommy's doing tons of rotation, tons of rotation. So one of the big mistakes I see in a lot of baseball programs is, is more rotation, right? So kids out there, kids in season, he's hitting, he's hitting, he's throwing, right? And then the strength coach has him doing more explosive rotation with med ball or with bands and things like that. And a lot of times it's just too much for the lower back. If a kid's posture's not great, structurally and physiologically they're not, they're not sound, right? You're gonna wind up having some lower back issues. So anti-rotation, core bracing planks, bridges, things like that is another great way to work some of that bracing action, right? And a minimal amount of, of, of flexion and extension, you know, make sure you work that lower back too, okay? We'll get to one of those next, all right? So the next exercise he's gonna do is just gonna step out, right? He's gonna one hand over the other, he's gonna pull it to his sternum, he's gonna sit down, make sure everything's nice and in line, and he's gonna extend his arms out and hold that brace position nice and tight, and he'll hold that for time. A lot of times we'll do like a 10 second count, nine, eight, seven, six, he would hold that and then switch and do the other side, rotate the other way and hit the other side, do both sides, counter rotation. Since Tommy has a unique uh, 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 situation where he hits lefty and throws righty, okay, he's getting a lot of rotation from both sides, but if I had a kid that was all one side, a right-handed hitter and a, and a right-handed thrower, I might do more anti-rotation to the opposite side, right? I might do more counter-rotation to the opposite side, and I probably wouldn't do too much rotation into their dominant side. All right, so our next anti-rotation exercise what we're gonna do is just anti-rotation with movement, okay, with some contraction, uh, of the abdominals with some flexion of the abdominals, right? So this is a great way of working in some of that abdominal work and counter rotation together, okay? I like doing it on the blue ham. If you have a Roman chair, you can do that, but this works awesome. He can get his feet locked up, in, locked up into the blue ham, okay? He's gonna get his arms extended out in front of him. He's gonna brace that core and tighten up. I'm gonna give him that anti-rotation. He's gonna hold it nice and straight, and he's gonna create a small movement coming, all, coming down, and up, making sure he's not going down below 90 degrees. I try to keep maybe 10, 15 degrees below, uh, above 90. And he's gonna just, that's it, squeeze through his core, fight that anti-rotation. We do, could do 10, 15, 20 reps per side, depending on the strength of the anchor. Tom's pretty strong, so we'd probably be doing somewhere in the range of 20 reps per side, right? And then we'll move on to something else. Okay everyone, in this last segment, we're gonna show you a bunch of drills not to do. These are the drills that I see high school kids, college kids, and even coaches doing all the time on the field during training sessions, between throwing and so forth. Some of these drills put your shoulder in precarious situations. They impinge the shoulder joint, they impinge the humor humerus onto the acromion, and they can actually cause rotator cuff, labral tears, and so forth. These are some of the drills not to do. I'm gonna put Tommy in the positions that are bad for him, okay, especially someone who, who has limited range of motion in his left arm, right, and already has some issues with that left arm. The last thing I wanna be do is, is put him into excessive impingement. I see every, every baseball team I've worked with, every baseball kid I work with, when they come into our gym, they're waiting for me to get to them, they're, they're, they maybe foam wall for like two seconds, and I see these racks stretching and pulling on their shoulders and pulling on their arms. So I'm gonna show you three common things that I see 
with baseball players that you should not do at all. Right? And the first one's going to be this, this winging the arm. A lot of guys are getting into position and to force themselves down into a bad position, pinching that shoulder, right? putting too much pressure on the shoulder. A lot of times the head of the humerus is pushing through anteriorly, bulging out that anterior capsule, or I literally am touching the glenohumeral, right? The chromium from my scapula is getting pounded on, right? I'm crushing the bursa in between there, creating a lot of impingement, a lot of tissue, a lot of nerves in there that get damaged stuff. That's no good, right? Don't do that, okay? The next exercise I'm going to show you is another common one I see. I call this the doorway stretch. A lot of guys in the doorway, Tom's going to get that arm up, right? Now you guys see guys like this, same thing, same principle, right? I'm, I'm, he thinks he's stretching his chest, I'm getting a warm up, right? And he is. He's stretching that chest muscle out, and he's stretching the anterior capsule. That's not what you want. Throwers are getting a ton of anterior capsule laxicity because of throwing, right? Over the course of a season, he's probably feeling like his arms loosening up and getting better, right? But the reality is, is he's creating a lot more laxicity. And doing the same thing, too much impingement, no good, right? That humerus is rotating anteriorly, crushing in on that acromion, no good, right? So, last exercise to see is guys working the bands, ripping that arm out behind them, right? Thinking, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not doing this, so I don't feel the pain, but the same principle, the humerus is kind of shaped like this, so if I pull it back, it rotates forward, right? And it, the head of the humerus just rotates out to that anterior uh, capsule and puts a lot of strain on it. This is another one, no good. You want to get stretching the deltoid, right? There's a lot of other exercises that we showed you today that you could do. You could work the tissue quality of the bicep using the tiger tail and just some other good stretches that I'll show you later on in this video that you could use to stretch out the bicep and the forearm without doing this, without putting the shoulder into excessive uh, range of motion, no good, okay? Do not do these exercises. Alright guys, so we showed you some of the drills not to do and some of the things that I think are counterintuitive for baseball players because of the impingement of the shoulder, because of the uh, overuse injuries that most baseball players incur. We showed you those drills as what not to do. Those are what we call our, our worst baseball drills. The next set of drills we're going to do, we're going to show you some drills that, are, that you can do if you want to get a little bit of a static stretch and you want to warm up, let's say, as part of your pre-game warm up. Okay? Some guys like the static stretch, I static stretch. Static stretching is okay, there is a place for it, it's not a problem, but there's some drills that you can do that are more appropriate for your shoulders, for your biceps, and for throwers specifically. So the first drill we're going to do is just some wrist and forearm flexibility. Really simple. I'm just going to extend my arm and I want to put a little bit of pressure and extend and pull. I'm trying to stretch out all the forearm muscles on the top of the forearm okay? and just get a good stretch and I would alternate arms extending the elbow out and I'm going to do maybe about 10 or so reps per arm right? holding that position placing a little bit of pressure. Now, you don't want to push too hard. I want to extend the elbow, lift and hold. Okay? Now we showed you a couple of our worst drills and what not to do and that was one of our doorway stretches and our, our wishbone stretch like this and those are the drills we don't want to do. Okay? So I'm going to show you two drills that you can do that will stretch those same muscle groups but don't put the impingement on your shoulders. First off, okay, I'm going to get inside the rack, you could do this in a doorway as well and I'm going to get my hands below my shoulder level so right around waist level and I'm going to step out and I'm going to kind of puff my chest up and push through and I'm getting a great stretch in my pecs and biceps okay, just from this alone. Okay? And I'm going to step through and hold, I'll come back, okay? I'll step through again, and chest up, chest up. The more I push my chest up, the more stretch I'm getting, the more I feel it radiating down through my chest, pecs and bicep. Right? And this is a great stretch. And zero shoulder impingement. Now, I'm not impinging the shoulder, I'm not in risk of hurting my shoulder, okay? I'm not protruding the uh, humerus through the anterior capsule, and I'm not impinging on the, uh, on the acromium at all. Okay? The next exercise we're going to show you is a lat stretch. Okay? So a lot of guys doing this wing stretch, okay? doing this stretch, they're trying to stretch their lats. I see guys hanging from the hanging from the push pull up bars all the time, okay, trying to stretch all, all their lat muscles out. So here I'm going to show you a, the proper way to stretch your lat, specific for throwers, so that you don't injure yourself. I'm going to line myself up with the rack. You can, again, you could use a doorway, okay, you can just use an open doorway, something that you can grab a hold of. I'm going to get into a squat position, I'm going to turn my hand over, and I'm just going to lean back and pull, nice and light. Okay, getting a great stretch right now. I feel a great lat stretch. I'm kind of, as I pull back, I'm kind of leaning over to that left arm a little bit. 
I'm getting a great stretch in my lat. I can feel everything pulling nice. I'm gonna hold for a couple seconds, rotate and switch, palm down, pull, and kind of lean in a little bit. I do about 10 or 15 of those per side, along with the, the step through pec stretch, shoulder stretch. I do about 10 or 15 of those, 10 or 15 lat stretches to side, do my wrist and forearm work, and that's a great static stretching additive to your mobility flexibility routine.